very good morning once again the year 2023 has started off with a big bang it started actually initially with that little bit of scare of the fourth phase of covid and a lot of people were wondering what to do but now suddenly it seems to be going off now the people who had said that there is going to be a fourth wave of covid were they telling lies People who said that, no, there is going to be no fourth wave, we've had enough, nothing will happen uh, now, relax, enjoy, were they telling lies? So, before I even go on to the main topic, which is why adults, you know, who are supposed to be mature people, who are supposed to have gone through a good upbringing and have come to a level where they understand values of life and all that, why is it that we still tell lies throughout our life? So, that being the main topic, let me first ask, what exactly are lies? What is truth and what is untruth? In my experience, there is a lot of gray area between the two. It's very rare that you say that this is the absolute truth and this is an absolute lie. We don't, we cannot clarify like that. It is like, you know, in the good old days, there used to be heroes and villains. Today, as you can look around and see, you can't define who is a hero and who is a villain, who is doing good and who is doing bad. So the same way as we talk about good and bad, we talk about pap and punya, we talk about so many other things. The same thing applies over here. That is, what is the truth and what are lies? In fact, let me also extend that to the concept what we call as exaggerations. Do exaggerations come in truth or in uh, lies? Supposing I say that, you know, I'm a very rich person. Now, I may not be all that rich and if somebody were to statistically compare me with somebody else's wealth and all that, they may say that, no, you come under the bottom 20%, etc. But I can say that I am a very rich person. What am I doing? Am I telling an untruth? No, actually I am exaggerating. I do have wealth, but what wealth I have, I am stretching it a little bit here and there and saying I am a very rich uh, person. You will be amazed how often we do this, you know. And Many, many, many times we don't do it with bad intention. We actually believe in it. A lot of us believe in a lot of uh, uh, things. And therefore, we say it with such confidence. You will have people saying that you do this and you will get moksha. You do that and you will burn in hell. Did God Almighty come and sit you down and explain to you what exactly takes a person to heaven and hell? Not at all. But with what great confidence we talk about such uh, uh, things. And from there it goes on to anything and uh, um, everything. We start thinking that this is good, that is bad. This is the truth and this is an untruth. Okay. Let me also take one another um, aspect. People who are very blunt, curt, very straightforward. If somebody buys a new shirt, puts it on and very happily, you know, I had to save money. I wanted this particular uh, shirt. It was very expensive. Finally, I managed to get enough money and I have worn it and I have come. Is it looking good? The other person says, no, it's not looking good on you. He's telling the truth. From his perspective, remember that. It is his opinion that that shirt is not looking good on that person. And he has expressed his opinion. On the one side, you can congratulate him for being truthful, that he is telling what he feels. On the other hand, somebody may say, why did you have to put down that poor fellow? Hmm? He took so much trouble. He saved so much money. He somehow wanted that particular shirt. He felt that that shirt looks good on him. Similarly, there may be another friend of his who looks at him and very truthfully says, Hey, dude, that shirt is looking fantastic, man. It's just ideal for you. 
that's again his opinion but this person gets very pleased when he hears uh, uh, this isn't it then you have another category of people who don't even realize that they are telling lies they're so caught up in themselves they actually have their own beliefs they have their own self centeredness their focus it could be on themselves it could be on others it could be somebody who says that particular you know god man or swami or whatever is the best in the whole world he is the holiest person he is this he is that and that fellow gets arrested for some thing which he has done which is illegal the surprising part is his followers still continue to believe that when a court of law has proven beyond doubt that this person has done a horrible crime and he is locked up in jail people still you know continue to believe that he is a wonderful uh, person so when they say that he is such a nice person they are actually according to themselves telling the uh, truth then there is one more category what we normally refer to as white lies hey telling a small lie like i gave you the example no yeah this shirt is looking so nice on you now i don't believe that that shirt is looking so nice on me but when he came and asked me knowing that he had to put in so much effort to buy that thing and it means so much to him am i doing any harm by saying yes that shirt is good so i say it is a white lie i'm not you know causing any harm to anybody and just being kind to him poor fellow now you extend that if you have said that this is looking good he keeps on buying that type of stuff which doesn't suit him at all which doesn't make him look good because you are the one who sort of you know pushed him egged him on by giving him that praise <coughs> acknowledgement and he keeps going on the wrong track and somebody can say why do you do that firstly you told a lie you knew that this dress doesn't look good on this guy but you purposely said it looks good and because of that now he is going around making a fool of himself so even white lies can be questioned so many people who say white lies are justified because they are to make a person happy and without any you know encumbrance or without any negative effect on somebody you don't know where that negative uh, impact is uh, going to go on now what happens is let's go to the uh, you know what do you say uh, the root cause of it in many cases i have seen that if a person tends to start telling lies it starts in childhood <clears throat> very few people have come across who have been extremely honest and truthful in all their growing up years they become adults and then at some point or the other they start telling lies and the lies keep on increasing very few people in fact there are more people i know of who as children used to tell lies but when they grew up they stopped telling lies when they realized the outcome when they realized that sense of responsibility or maturity they stopped telling uh, lies so what about those who have become adults they have got a so called good education they are considered to be educated people they are born and brought up in a good culture where people maintain certain values and principles they are in a society where people don't have any wants see sometimes we can excuse a person for telling lies if he is at the rock bottom of uh, society if he is starving for example he has no food to eat he doesn't think twice before telling a lie to somebody so that he can get his food or he can get some charity normally we tend to have a soft corner for such people and we say poor fellow you know out of compulsion he has told a lie because if he tells the truth he will not get his food or his this thing and he is at starvation level so taking that into consideration let us try and understand what is it that makes people you know even after they grow up and even after they acquire a sense of responsibility they have a career they have a family they have their social responsibilities 
and yet they keep telling lies. You must have heard of the words called compulsive liar or pathological liar. Normally, I don't like to give labels to people, but it does happen that there are people who have such compulsive lying habit that sometimes even when there is no need, they will tell a lie. I can understand somebody telling a lie for some benefit that I'm getting something out of it. But there are people who tell lies just because they've got so habituated to doing uh, that. I remember in my early childhood, we used to have this freelance journalist, a fellow who used to go around, you know, exaggerating and showing off, saying, oh, I know everybody. I know the chief minister. I know the IS officers. I know this one. They always oblige me and I advise them what to do and all. We knew somewhere along the line that this fellow is you know, exaggerating and he is uh, you know, not telling the uh, truth. We used to somehow humor him and uh, keep it that way. Sometimes we used to take advantage of him saying that, oh, you are such an influential fellow that IAS officer called you and did this, this. So give us a cup of tea, give us a treat and all that. And he would happily give us uh, treats. And as youngsters, we used to enjoy uh, that. One fine day when somebody was pulling his leg and telling him, why do you keep saying that? Yeah, come on, we know this is not true. He said, what are you talking about? My fame now, you know, has become international. Last week, didn't you people notice that I was not here? Didn't you realize? The whole of last week, I had gone to Dubai. And you know why? Because the king of Dubai had invited me. He said that you are such a great journalist. Please come and interview me. He sent tickets and he called uh, me. I said, come on, yeah, don't bluff. Why will the king of Dubai call a person like you? Yes, I'm not telling a lie. Absolutely. And you know the type of honor and respect I got there? As soon as I landed in Dubai airport, all of Dubai's IAS officers were standing there to receive me. He didn't even realize that IAS means Indian Administrative Service. And how can Dubai have IAS officers? So this is what I meant by saying people, even when there is no reason to do it, they get into it. And those are the people we refer to as pathological liars or compulsive liars. And then there's another proverb you've all heard of it that if you tell one lie, to cover that up, you have to tell 100 lies. The flip side of it is that if you are always ensuring that you tell the truth, then you don't have to remember what you said. When you tell a lie, you have to remember what lie you uh, said. Finally, there are uh, you know, people who get caught in this uh, guilt that, you know, I have done this wrong, I have done that wrong. The only way to get out of it is to start telling lies. So they become selective liars. When it comes to a specific area where they feel guilty, where they feel that they have failed or they have not been able to achieve, in that area, they start, you know, telling uh, lies. Okay, so with that, let us just run through the reasons. Why is it that people tell lies? So as usual, I jotted down some points and uh, Anis has made it into a nice little slide for uh, us. A few important reasons why people tell lies. One very obvious one which starts from uh, childhood is to escape punishment. Even as adults, sometimes we want to escape punishment. Boss will punish me if I... Tell the truth that I was just lazy and I didn't do the work. So I create something and I tell a lie and I escape that punishment. The other could be embarrassment. I feel embarrassed at what I did or I feel embarrassed at what I am. So to get out of that embarrassment, I tell a uh, lie. It can also be to please someone. That person is important to me. That person can be very useful to me. So if I tell lies and I please that person, then I will get what I uh, want. Very similar to that is to gain acceptance. I want to be accepted. It starts again as in childhood and in you know uh, adolescence. You want to be accepted in your peer group. That's why you start telling lies and you carry it through to adult life. It could be to avoid rejection. I will get rejected if I don't uh, tell lies. If I tell the truth, they will not accept me. They will not like me. 
it would also be a sense of desperation. I'm so desperate. I don't see any other way out of escaping rather than telling a lie and getting away with it. And then, of course, everyone does it. That's such a common reason I have found for people telling lies. Everyone does it. So what's so great? Why are you questioning me? Though logically that doesn't hold water as far as I'm, my belief goes. But it's so commonly used. And then, of course, bad role models. It's similar to that. Why everyone does it? It's role model. My father tells lies. My teacher tells lies. My boss tells lies. So what's wrong if I tell lies? And the last one, most important is people who go to either extreme of either having a low self-esteem or having a very high ego. These are the type of people who become what I was talking to you about as compulsive liars. And this is what we need to understand. So when you come across somebody who is telling lies, or sometimes even you, if you find that you are you know, resorting to telling uh, lies, and you yourself are not very comfortable with the uh, idea, then you can you know, think about these things. Which one suits me? Or which one suits this person who's telling lies? Or you're trying to help somebody, that person is close to you and you're trying to help that person to come out of it. First, try to identify the reasons. That is very uh, interesting. Achha. Here I have made a little list compiled from here and there about what are the most common lies. You'll be amazed when you see this uh, uh, list, which are supposed to be the most common lies that people uh, uh, tell. It starts with, I'm fine, nothing is wrong, I'm good, thank you, yeah, everything is okay. That's one of the most common lies. And in cities like Bangalore and all the metropolitan cities, you go reach somewhere late and without blinking an eyelid, you say, I was stuck in traffic. The interesting thing is that when we move from seminars to webinars, I still find people joining in late. I don't know what traffic they were stuck in going from their room to the uh, laptop or their phone, but they use that as a very common use. I had mentioned this to you earlier, flattery. Oh, you look great in that dress. Or you're looking so handsome, you're looking so beautiful, you're looking, this is so pretty, this thing is suiting you so well. This is also one of the most you know, common ones. Then people who are, are into alcohol. I only had one drink. I'm not an alcoholic, I don't drink. Uh, I only had one drink. Very commonly you will hear people saying things like that. Why didn't you call me? I was waiting for you. Why didn't you take my call? My phone is not working. Now that we are all onto smartphones, we have become smarter than the smartphone by using this excuse of the phone. My phone was not working. The battery was down. The charge was down. I didn't get your message. I didn't get your missed call. Then I had no way to contact you. Your number is not there in my list. I don't know why it happened. There was no way I could contact you. I was wanting to contact you. I never got this uh, uh, message. And finally, <laughs> I'll call you right back. How often I have seen people, somebody comes and sits with me to have a long drawn out discussion or just a gossip session also or a counseling session. And the phone rings and the person picks up and says, I'll call you back in. I'll just call you back. I'll call you right back. And for the next one hour, he's sitting with me talking. What happened to that? I'll call you right back. Doesn't it sound funny? Just think of the type of lies that I listed out in this. How is it possible that we get away with such things? None of these, if you see the list, none of these are you know, compelling to you. None of these are going to cause you a lot of damage if you say that, yes, I forgot to call you back. Or yes, I got your message, but then I got busy with something else and it completely slipped my mind. I'm sorry. Yes, I am uh, uh, late and I'm late because I started late. 
so easily we can say the truth and believe me people will learn to respect you that is one way of coming out of this habit of telling lies is to note that the good people the people who deserve to be your friends or who deserve to be close to you they always respect truth but that is not what we understand and i told you why this uh, um, uh, happens is primarily from the childhood it starts from the childhood and keeps on building uh, up i'll give you a couple of examples the great psychologist who has taught me so much about behavioral sciences dennis the menace dennis is looking at his mother angrily and saying you only tell me not to tell lies then why are you asking me to say sorry to margaret margaret is his girlfriend with whom you know he is always having a tough tiff he probably went and pulled her ponytail or did something naughty margaret must have come and complained to dennis's mother and dennis's mother saying say sorry to margaret now the contention of dennis is i don't feel sorry for what i did given a chance i'll again pull her ponytail tomorrow but you are saying you are asking me say sorry to margaret so if i say sorry to margaret that is a lie how can you teach me to tell a lie and then keep on lecturing me that you should never tell lies these are some of the things which you know we start off at childhood we don't even realize how much it affects uh, us and we carry it through into adult life now what do you do how do you cope with a person who is a compulsive liar we have people around that left right and center some of them are very important people we can't just cut off you know relationship with uh, them so when you know that this person has a habit of continuously telling lies what can you do in terms of coping the first thing is being more in control of your own self don't lose your temper even if this person is so frustrating he is telling blatant lies the moment you lose your temper you will never be able to you know set him right or like, make him think rationally or anything like that so before you react to the other person's lies first ensure that your emotions are under uh, control and how do you do that by reminding yourself that it's not about you the problem is with that person not about you and if possible be supportive to the person i know that normally you know you always tell the truth i know that you are going through a difficult time be supportive if possible but at the same time expect denial expect more lies the moment we start browbeating and this also starts off in childhood a parent or a teacher going on browbeating a child tell the truth you did this no you have taken this no no ma'am i didn't take it now he is caught then there were you nobody else came into this room you are the only one who uh, came in no ma'am i didn't come into the room hey that man said that you had come in the no, i was just passing by the door and i looked inside ma'am but i didn't come inside the uh, room so you get more and more and more lies if you start you know being non supportive and being interrogative and that is why i mentioned over here don't get into long arguments with anybody the moment you realize that he is telling the truth back off change the topic and then that way you can give him a chance to come back to the uh, truth same way give positive strokes when he does not tell lies you see a lot of people grow up and become you know compulsive uh, liars because they start you know thinking that if i tell the truth there is no reward but if you can show appreciation if you can actually thank him when he tells the truth now to protect yourself try and have a witness because very often people start you know telling lies and then they deny it later interact via email text written record even my colleagues in office i keep telling them it so often happens 
we have given an appointment to somebody or we have fixed up something with somebody we had a nice discussion with that person and the person says no you never said that when did you tell me this so i always tell them that there if there is a you know significant thing that on monday 10:30 you have agreed to come here shoot off a message a text message or whatsapp or whatever it is immediately and don't delete it and if this person tries to bluff his way through just show him that message that see I, we had confirmed that you will be meeting us at 10:30 on the uh, monday slowly things do start coming under uh, uh, you know uh, control also at times explain the harm it is causing some people don't even realize that by telling lies how they are harming others so explain the harm that it is uh, causing this is what is is happening to me instead of accusing the person take it on yourself and say because of this i am feeling bad if possible if the person is open to it suggest therapy there are very good therapies counseling that can be done if the person is open to it and willing if he acknowledges that yes i'm getting into this habit of telling too many lies i want to get out of it i want to you know improve my situation if that he does there are various wonderful therapies counseling techniques by which the person can be helped to come out of it i won't go into those details now if anybody is interested please get in touch send me a mail i'll give you some tips and means of what we mean by how do you counsel a person or how do you provide therapy for a person who's telling lies at the same time i would also suggest that if nothing works if you have tried all your ways and means and you know that this person is continuing to tell lies and is not even acknowledging it not aware of it or does not want to be aware of it then protect yourself by keeping away if you can keep away physically nothing like it if you can't keep away physically at least keep away mentally then and then only you will be at a safe distance like you know you will be on the shore and maybe some other time later you will be able to help the person if the there is a change in the demeanor of that uh, person but don't become a victim of people who tell lies getting frustrated crying getting upset complaining he is always telling lies he doesn't listen it does not help because you are taking upon yourself the negativity of somebody else and you definitely need not you know do anything like uh, uh, that as you know right from childhood we have been drilled into thinking that telling lies is bad but somehow it is made into such a moralistic uh, uh, thing that people don't look at it from the basic you know day to day life how it affects we are always told that you know you tell lies and god will punish you somewhere along the line we don't believe it you heard of that uh, bollywood song which says jhoot bole kawa kaate no which crow is looking around for somebody which crow understands who's telling a lie and comes and bites him have you ever been bitten by a crow whether you told a hundred lies or not so why talk about something which has no meaning which doesn't serve any purpose but yet we keep doing uh, that and that is the reason why i feel all of us can you know get together and look for ways and means for what we can do and how we can uh, uh, do the simple uh, you know issues regarding interpersonal relationships and well being but we need to learn how to handle these and it can be done somehow we don't give enough significance to it till things go out of control and then things get very bad and relationships break and all that so even if either you yourself or somebody else is getting into a habit of telling once in a while you tell lies it's okay you cannot you're not a perfect human being or whatever it is but if you can get into the habit of continuously reducing it and helping people to reduce it i think we'll be doing a great service right so with that i take my break and here is sonal to tell you a couple of quick announcements good morning 
गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन एज ऑलवेज सच इन साइट फुल टॉक एज ही वॉज टॉकिंग वी जनरली टेन टू यू नो इंट्रोस्पेक्ट एंड ट्राई टू कनेक्ट इफ एट ऑल यू हैव एक्सपीरियंस और यू हैव हर्ड अबाउट समबडी एक्सप्रेसिंग दैट यू नो आई डोंट नो हाउ टू डील विद दैट लाई दैट्स वॉट रिमाइंडेड मी वेन आई वॉज लिस्निंग टू अली वन चाइल्ड वॉज टेलिंग मी दैट यू नो he is uh encountering or uh, facing a girl telling lies about him to the teachers and the way she speaks everybody is believing him and nobody is believing the person the child who is speaking to me that's where he had developed so much of anger that he started hating girls per se now can you understand what a damage it can do to people around when one person says lies and others also start believing that one person and the child who is like shouting out and telling that this is not what i did believe me nobody is believing him so sad isn't it that's where i feel that you know hi brunalini good morning yeah so that's where i feel that you know doing such course like our diploma in counseling skills helps us bring out the person to speak out what they feel and i think by listening to this child at least some damage control is happening i'm helping him empower that yes you can deal with such people without getting angry exactly what ali was telling those tips i also had given him those tips that time thanks to ali that he is always around to help us out to help other people and that's what helped a lot to him and he is now able to ignore and move on and focus on his studies that's the power of i think our diploma in counseling skills what bunjara offers and the free counseling services that we give to people in turn to you know help people around to deal with difficult situations and when we talk about children let me tell that our course ipcad is also there if at all you think that somebody wants to understand children in depth feel free to give them our um, contact number and jennifer and anis will help you out to understand what it is all about because this course ipcad is completely online all the videos will be shown to you online it is on our lms and later once a week there will be mentoring session where you can discuss it out express yourself go through those introspection time where you were a child and just you know work on yourself it's a lot of things that you can do that's why i think next week topic also will inspire you mood swings in toddlers and kids yeah i think both can be interconnected when children speaks like chil- uh, sorry when adults speaks like children go through that mood swing what happened to this person sometime back he stole something else now he is telling something else yeah that's how children also get affected with adults lives and ali is back after his break here is ali for you yes i'm back to the more interesting part of this program because i enjoy this much more than my lectures i get quite bored of my own uh, lectures yes we've been having some very nice greetings for sankranti all the best to all of you sankranti the festival which brings in the change of the climate and after a chill winter and lots of rains in a city like bangalore we can now look forward to a little warmth a little bit of sun sunshine and a lot of vitamin d so make, make sure that you are all out and not stuck indoors and particularly not in closed places or air conditioned places be out in nature be out in sunlight that is the way to celebrate the spirit of sankranti from tomorrow onwards shobha says one of my students 
keeps on telling me lies. How can I cope with the student? As I always say, Shobha, that more than the, uh, you know, the symptom, what is the symptom the child is telling lies? What is the cause? What is the reason behind it? I've already discussed this in one of the earlier uh, sessions that children tell lies because they are afraid of punishment. They want to be accepted by the teacher or by their uh, peers. They are suffering from low self-esteem that, you know, unless I tell lies, nobody will accept me. So there could be one of so many different reasons. If you can take the trouble, put his lies aside, befriend him, get him close to you, make him talk about himself. Once he starts relating to you what all have been his experiences in his little life, you will come across reasons. And once you do that, the primary thing to do is to tell him or make him understand that in the long run, it is always better to tell the truth. You get better relationships, you hold your head high up, you get a better reputation. All this happens if you stick to the truth. So the advantages of telling the truth. Namina says when an adult knows that he she will not be accepted by telling the truth, then how does one muster courage to tell the truth? Now here comes a very important question. Accepted. Accepted by whom? This is something which we need to look into. Sometimes we want to be accepted in our social group, in our neighborhood or among our you know, colleagues or former classmates or whatever it is. Ask yourself, if they are pathological liars, if they are encouraging lies, if they do not appreciate truth and I will not be accepted if I keep telling the truth, ask yourself when fundamental questions, do I need to be accepted by such people? Can I not be away from such people? They are toxic. They're not worth making friends or spending your time or investing your energies in. Okay. At the same time, I also accept that sometimes you have to, I gave the example of, let's say, a boss, you know, who's asking, uh, saying that, hey, doesn't this shirt look good uh, uh, to me? Now, if I tell him the truth that, no, this is not really suiting you, I may not be accepted and it can even cost me my job or it can cause a lot of politics in the office or whatever, right? So even there, there are ways and means of coping and saying that generally you do have a good sense of dress. There are so many of your dresses which I have admired. There are always good and bad. You can take so many people's opinion and then form your opinion. Who am I to you know, comment on this? Oh, you like this particular dress, is it? You have selected this as the uh, best. See how I am avoiding telling a lie that this dress, according to me, does not suit you. Even when it comes to, you know, specific areas of uh, uh, having to tell lies to uh, somebody, you can use the same techniques. It's a little more, you know, sensitive and a little more practice is needed. But you can always create an environment where you avoid, you know, uh, telling lies just to be accepted by that uh, uh, person. If you can put in that little effort, you will see that you will be able to, you know, at least marginally keep yourself, uh, you know, uh, being accepted by the person. Just a few days back, I was having a discussion with one of my old students who's now come into a, a position of authority. He's the number two in a big organization, but the number one and his family, his whole family is involved in the thing. They are the top guns. And they inevitably are playing politics within their own employees. They put them down. They do a lot of things. Now, this man likes his job. He's efficient at it. His customers and his uh, you know, colleagues, they all appreciate him. He's getting a good salary. So just because of this bad behavior of his boss and family, he obviously doesn't want to give up a nice, stable uh, job. So what we were discussing last time was, we were rehearsing how you can correct, I mean, accept 
certain things of the boss or deflect certain things of the boss without letting go of your own conscience. If you want to learn that, there was a uh, you know TV serial long back called Yes Minister. It, uh, the sequel came out as Yes Prime Minister also. It shows how this secretary always manages to say yes to his boss, the minister. And slowly and subtly, he gets around to getting things done the way he feels is correct. These are very simple techniques. You have to practice. You have to get uh, into that habit. When you are caught in that situation, now this person, the boss is a minister. will throw him out if he tries to say, no minister, you are wrong or something. How they manage it? There are always ways and means of doing it. Yes, good to see Kerali back with us again. I've always appreciated Kerali and her excellent work in spastic society. She says, often children tell harmless lies, like how they travel to various places and enjoy it. I have realized that they are just their dreams, especially children with special needs. Yes, and Kerali is right. She has worked for 30, 40 years with children with special needs, spastic children and all these things. So what happens is, that when you have a child who is just fantasizing, I would not even call it a lie, I would say fantasizing. The child says, you know what, I got myself a helicopter and I sat in that helicopter and I went to my favorite auntie who lives in Chennai and she made such lovely parathas and gave me and I ate that and I came back. Now, would I really call it a lie or would I call it a fantasy? What I can do is I can say, I'm so happy for you. You're feeling nice and bright, no? See, even without going to Chennai, just sitting and visualizing going to Chennai and going to your favorite aunt, see how happy it made you feel? See how you are enjoying the taste of that uh, you know, paratha without actually ha having eaten it today? So you're acknowledging that fantasy and that uh, you know imagination of the child. And yet... You are not condemning the child saying that, don't tell lies. How can you go? Where will you get a helicopter? You don't have to get into all that. No? Ah, Swapna says, good morning. I have a person who bluffs about his remuneration for the services given by him so that we feel guilty for paying him less for what he has uh, uh, done. Here again, I would use a very simple technique if he comes to me and says, you know, I, I also do similar work for my uh, for your neighbor and that neighbor pays me double of what you are paying me i'm so happy for you i'm so glad that you have won the appreciation of the neighbor so much so that he uh, gives you double the uh, payment which i am giving you so it must be making you happy and it must be you know helping you in your income and your inflow because at least some people are giving you double i really wish i also could have given you that much but you know, I have my limitations. I cannot pay that type of uh, uh, money uh, because I have other commitments. I have to balance out so many uh, things. I'll keep it in mind. The day I have a lot of money like that other neighbor has, I will also make it a point to see that you get more. But right now, this is what I can give. I am happy with your services. You continue doing this work which you are doing for me. And I will see to it that I continue to pay what I am paying you. Sounds a, so simple, but it can be done, right? Navina says, supposing in a marriage, one of the spouse starts liking someone else. How does one muster courage to tell the truth to the partner? Because there are high chances that the marriage may go for a toss. I am a strong believer that when there is a pati and patni, and when a wo comes into it, the third person, the third person whom this spouse has started liking, and I'm presuming we are talking about liking in a romantic sense. If that person is liking like a child or like a sister or like something else, obviously that should not cause any harm to the marriage. So if we find that somebody is doing that, don't try to confront the person, question the person, browbeat the person, or try to you know prove that that person is wrong. Look inward. Where is my relationship with my spouse going wrong? Why does my spouse have a need to go to a third person to fulfill what his life partner should have fulfilled? Start talking on that. 
I want to improve our relationship. I think we have we are drifting. I think somewhere we are not investing enough, particularly me myself. So I want to do something. So can you tell me what you want from me more than what I am giving you right now? Can you tell me how we can make things different? Can you tell me this that? I think that will have a much better chance of getting back a person who is straying somewhere this side or that side to come back to the spouse. Yes, that uh, Navina's thing I've already answered. Farida, good to have you back, Farida. I've been missing you since quite a long time. Farida also does excellent work in education and she takes care of special children and so many other uh, things. These are people who are really making their life very meaningful. So it's always a pleasure to interact with people like uh, Farida. Farida says, my son gave me a very good advice which made a huge difference to my life. Just evaluate whether the person who you are lying to for the sake of peace, acceptance or anything is really worth it. Excellent advice given by your son Farida. Hats off to the youngster. When seriously given a thought, I realize no one is worth lying to. Exactly. If they are worth it, they will be okay with my truth. My relationships changed tremendously after the realization. But the balance is also in knowing that not everyone needs to know everything about you. It's okay not to reveal certain things. Yes, that is where it comes in. All these things, that's why I've been saying that don't look at it in black and white. Don't just say this is the truth and that is a lie or something. There are always ways and means where you can skirt the main issue, come back to the original direction and continue without getting into confrontations, without getting into you know, negativity or spoiling relationships and stuff like that. That. Ha. Ah. Kirti says, Good morning, Ali. My daughter, eight years old, keeps pointing out that, that couple of her friends in class keep lying. I'm scared that will she start doing the same, being in such company? She innocently keeps correcting them. Shall I ask her to ignore them or how do I deal with such a situation? Okay. Now, she's got these couple of friends who keep lying. Let her not you know, mix up the two of them. Keep them aside. Both of them are individuals by themselves. One will be telling lies for one reason. The other will be telling lies for another reason. Even though your child is very small, this is the right time to start building up her emotional intelligence, particularly the factor of empathy. Help her to explore and find out why friend A tells lies and why friend B tells lies. If your child at such an innocent age can build up this skill of empathy, of looking into the why behind the what, she will be able to understand what is the best way of tackling it, including if one of them happens to be what we call you know, that pathological liar or something, that whatever you do, she is all the time going to tell lies. Then teach your child to slowly withdraw not to have too much interaction with that person so that at least she doesn't get affected. And from time to time, give your child a lot of positive strokes that you are not telling lies. You are not getting influenced by a couple of friends who tell lies. Tell her that she also has other friends who don't tell lies. And all of you are such wonderful children that even when you see around you some others telling lies, you uphold the highest of values. Renu says people lie to please and avoid conflicts with others many a time. Yes, they do, Renu. But look at it from the long-term perspective. You are trying to please and avoid conflict. But in the long run, what is happening? Number one, when you say please. And that person says, even when I tell lies, the other person pleases me, does not uh, confront me. So, I will keep telling more and more lies. Similarly, when you say conflict, it is better to have a conflict right now, face it, rather than allowing it to build up and build up and build up. And then things get extremely bad. This is what I always say about the difference between 
tolerance and acceptance. Okay, Parveen has a disagreement. The wife need not be lacking for the spouse to stray. Mind it, Parveen, I did not say lacking. I said that they have created a distance between themselves. You see, I, I am nobody to pass judgment saying that wife is lacking, husband is good, husband is bad, wife is good. No. When we talk about close relationships, human relationships, we are not worried about who's right and wrong. What I am saying is a husband and wife, when they get married, they are 100% committed to each other. They have made up their mind that the rest of my life, I'm going to be loyal to my spouse. Then, as we uh, saw in the earlier thing, one of them starts taking a liking to another person, a romantic liking. Why does that happen is because they are not connecting to each other. It has nothing to do with anything lacking in the wife. They are not connecting the way they used to connect earlier. So that is what you need to work on. That what happened to our relationship that my spouse is looking outside for something. It's like if I am cooking good food and giving him, why would he like to go out every day and eat? He should be happy. I, I, and if I can make something which pleases him more or which he enjoys more, even if once in a while he was going out, he will start coming back home for the food. Roshan says it is the upbringing that matters. My son, being very honest, actually took his classmate by the collar as he was cheating in class. That boy said, Tu bahara mai tera ko dikhatao. Fine. There are two aspects to it. One is, do you really need to take anybody by the collar just because he is cheating? You are also a student. You are not the invigilator. You are not the person who has been given the responsibility that children should not uh, uh, cheat. So yet, why does a person get so aggravated that he actually pulls him by the collar? See, forget about that boy who was cheating and whom and this person caught. Even the other classmates who are observing would get a little put off that, hey, this guy seems to be so violent. He is pulling that fellow by the collar, whatever that fellow may have done. So you can, you know, run the risk of spoiling your uh, relationship. So sometimes we have to see what we need to do, what we can do and what we cannot uh, do. So when it comes to cheating, when it comes to telling lies, how am I involved is what we need to think. Ah, Parveen says, yes, Ali, connection issue, connection, compatibility, making that little extra effort to be closer together. Sometimes we take our relationship for granted. I've heard people saying things like, you know, after all, she's my wife, so she should know what I want. After all, he is my husband. So he by now he should know. No, it doesn't work that way. You don't have a local area network you know, plugged into your respective brains. You have to communicate. You have to talk. You have to express. And not make allegation that, you know, you are chasing another woman or you are chasing another man. You are doing this. Then it gets only bad. Talk about building a relationship. You are still committed, no? You are lifelong partners. Other people will come and go from time to time. Ha. Ah, Navina says, how to role model to your child to speak the truth when the adult succumbs to situations at times. Does communication to your child and making the child understand why you told a lie per se help? Definitely it helps. Navina, it goes a long distance. I always tell adults who are dealing with children that when you have to tell a lie or you without realizing you've told a lie, whatever it is, Take the child aside, say, I think I've done something wrong. I have actually told a lie. I should not have done it. I did it because I got carried away by this or I was scared of that or whatever. But even then, that's no justification. Can you help me? Can we help each other? When I tell a lie, can we have some sort of code? You know, that if I am telling a lie, quietly from somewhere, you just show something like this. Same way when I see you telling a lie, I will show something like this. Nobody else will know what we are talking about. But this will be our way of helping each other to avoid telling lies. Become a partner with the child and see how well they blossom out and how well you can not only be a role model, but help them to become good uh, you know, human uh, 
beings. These are all the things that you know we need to look into. Dr. Dharani, who does excellent work in primary healthcare uh, centers in rural areas, he's our old student and a very, very committed doctor. He was earlier a professor of community medicine, but at the grassroots level, he's doing wonderful work. And I accept Dharnish's greetings of Happy New Year and Sankranti and wishes to Team Banjara and everyone else. You are all part of Team Banjara. Let me tell you that. It's not only those who come to Artinagar and sit here and work or do whatever it is. All of you are in some way or the other participating in this mission, this humble mission of uh, Banjara, by which you are also contributing. Even people who gives little positive strokes, even people who truthfully, you know, appreciate something that we are doing. We're not, you know, uh, flattering or we're not trying to be hypocrites, but when they do appreciate something genuinely and I can make out, all of us can make out when somebody is trying to flatter, isn't it? So when you do that, you're really serving a uh, purpose. The same way as just now I see Navina's positive stroke to us, your thoughts and guidance are really very helpful and makes us think and guide so well, eternally grateful. More than being, I, I'm really humbled by your thoughts, uh, Navina. But then more than being, uh, you know, uh, grateful, I would say that this is a chain. The whole, we are all connected to the universe in some way or the other. So if I have done a good deed to somebody, you pass on that good deed to somebody else. There was a Bollywood movie in which they were saying that, you know, whenever somebody does good to you, do good to three people. And that's how the whole message starts, uh, you know, spreading. So you may or may not be able to directly benefit the person who has been uh, good to you, but you spread it out. And the same thing can apply to telling the truth. Start looking around for people who are perpetually telling the truth, even in difficult circumstances. Firstly, get close to such people. Be with them. And secondly, appreciate them and point them out as role models. Farida says, my daughter, who is a special child, and Farida has brought her up beautifully to adulthood from the time she was a baby. I have been watching this child grow and blossom out wonderfully because of her mother. Okay, So Farida says, my daughter, being a special child, developed bladder control very late. Her dad would create a big scene whenever she wet herself. I started lying around this, which created a kind of panic in my child. I would clean her up quickly, clean the place, and hurry up to hide it. Not until I put my foot down and said that it is okay for her to wet herself at times and no one else is supposed to create a scene around it that she could finally gain control over her bladder. Even at times, now she cannot control it. It's fine. She's a child with special needs. She has limitations. She's still making effort. She's doing wonderful things. She has grown up into a very, very loving you know, young adult, which is what happens when mothers like Farida say that I don't need to be apologetic. I need not tell lies, whether it's to my husband, whether it is to my friends or neighbors. It is that way. It is so be it. Yes, I'm not going to tell lies that no, 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 that was water that fell down. No, she's not uh, wetting anymore. If she is, she is. She's a human being like anybody else, and particularly she's a human being with special needs. So she will not be able to keep up to things, you know, as good as some of the other uh, people. Ah, Sri Devi says, all Banjarites are my role models now. Thank you. And thankful and grateful ever for the same. Yes, Sri Devi, I repeat what I had told earlier that thanks for your thanks and more than being grateful to us, spread the message. Make others grateful that you have done things. This is the parting message for today. So we close the session promptly as it is striking 12 with the announcement that next week we have a very, very you know, interesting thing which I have been working on for the last couple of weeks and I'm gathering as much information as I can. And the topic, as Anis will show you right now, is mood swings in toddlers and kids why do children have mood swings and of course what we can do about it so please join us next saturday that is the 21st of january at 
11 o'clock. In the meanwhile, enjoy Sankranti. See you next week. Bye-bye.